here the question is describe the process of fertilization in angiosperms to get this question in the examination you have to write the answer in this way the answer is available on two slides this is one slide and uh, this is another slide so if you write all the description in the exam you will get five marks if you draw these diagrams three marks will be given so to the description five marks will be given to the diagrams three marks will be given overall eight marks to this answer while explaining the answer i will take uh, usually so many diagrams so all these diagrams no need to draw in the examination now i will start the explanation of fertilization in angiosperms here what is fertilization the simple definition is fusion of male and female gametes here male and female gametes are where they are located in an angiosperm flowering plant first i will tell you about the female gamete so this is the general structure of angiosperm flower so in the flower rock like structure that is called pedicel on pedicel thalamus is present broad structure is present on the thalamus general four floral parts are arranged sepals petals stamen and pistil stamen is a male sex organ pistil is a female sex organ now about the female gamete location i will tell you so this is the pistil this is the clear diagram of pistil at the base of the pistil the bulged structure is present that is called ovary above the ovary thin stalk like structure somewhat lengthy structure is present that is called style at the tip of the style stigma is present inside the ovary ovules are present these are the ovules so this is a clear structure of a ovule in ovule some small pore like structure is present that is called micropy exactly opposite to the micropy chalaza region is present now inside the ovule, some egg like structure is present that is called embryo sac this is a clear structure of embryo sac in embryo sac towards micropyle three cells are present and towards chalaza three cells are present in the middle one single cell is present inside the single cell two nuclei are present these two nuclei you can call it as polar nuclei and this is central cell then the three cells which are present towards a micropyle called egg apparatus so the middle cell this cell you can call it as egg cell or or female gamete so this is the location of female gamete now i will tell you about the male gamete location so in the flower the male sex organ is stem so this is the clear structure of stamen so at the base uh, somewhat uh, lengthy and uh, thin structure called filament is present above the filament bulged structure is present that is called anther usually anther dehiscence that means break up and uh, releases pollen powder like structure when you touch any flower you can feel somewhat uh, powder like structure usually touch to your fingers that powder is nothing but pollen pollen grains so this is the clear structure of a pollen grain in pollen grain you can see two cells are there one is larger and one is smaller larger cell you can call it as vegetative cell and smaller cell you can call it as generative cell and the pollen grain is surrounded by two walls that is exine and intine exine is outer and it is somewhat thick and made up of spore pollenin that is one kind of chemical and intine is inner and it is somewhat thin and it is made up of of pectocellulose usually 60% of plants release pollen grains in two celled stage but the remain 40% of plants usually liberate pollen grains in three celled stage what are three cells what happens so this is pollen grain it is surrounded by exine and intine and uh, this is the larger cell that is called uh, vegetative cell is present and uh, what about the generative cell generative cell single cell divided into two and form two cells these two cells you can call it as male gametes 60% of plants liberate two celled stage so what happens the two celled stage these pollen grains when they liberate from the anther usually they reach stigma by the process of pollination what is the pollinating agent means with the help of air with the help of water or some animals also the pollen grains reach the stigma that is called pollination when the pollen grains reach the stigma usually by absorbing the moisture which is present on the stigma they germinate and uh, produce a tube like structure that is called pollen tube like this here exine usually while germinating the pollen grain exine ruptures and uh, what happens this in time elongates and form a tube like structure into the pollen tube first this vegetative cell enters and after that generative cell enters there is no any role of vegetative cell after that it degenerates this generative cell single cell divided into two and form two cells these two cells you can call it as male gametes that means in 60% of plants two male gametes are present in pollen tube means in pollen tube only two male gametes formed but in 40% of plants in pollen grain only two male gametes are formed 
Okay, in any way, in two celled or three celled stage, finally the pollen grains reach the stigma. Then what happens? When the pollen grains reach the stigma, they germinate and produce a tube like structure. Now, in the pollen tube, two male gametes are present. This one and this is. Now, this pollen tube passes through the style and each pollen tube enter into each ovule. Actually, in the ovary, one to many ovules are present. So, in the previous diagram, I have given so many ovules in the ovary, but uh, here, clear view of diagram. I took only one ovule. So, this pollen tube enter into the ovule. In which way pollen tube enter into the ovule? That means in three ways. So, already I taught you this is the small pore like structure in the ovule that is uh, micropyle or exactly opposite to the micropyle. This is chalaza region. Actually, this is straight ovule. So, micropyle and chalaza are in straight way. So, this is uh, another type of ovule. This is inverted ovule. So, here the head is somewhat inverted. This is also ovule. So, here this is micropyle region. This is chalaza region. So, here pollen tube enter into the ovule by three ways. Here pollen tube enter into the ovule through the micropyle region. That is called porogamy. If the pollen tube enter into the ovule through chalazar region, that is called chalazogamy. If pollen tube enter into the ovule through integuments, in this way, these are the integuments. Means ovule walls, outer wall, inner. So, if the pollen tube enter into the ovule through integuments, that is called mesogamy. So, by three ways, through micropyle, through chalaza, or through integuments by three ways pollen tube enter into the ovule. Now pollen tube has to enter into the embryo sac. Pollen tube can enter into the embryo sac only through the synergy. Synergids are two which are present on either side of the egg cell that is female gamete. This is the middle one is female gamete called egg cell. On either side of the egg cell two synergids are present. So here the pollen tube first entered into the ovule by three ways through the integuments or through the chalaza or through the micropyle region. So by three ways pollen tube enter into the ovule wherever it is present here or here or here compulsory this pollen tube move towards the synergy out of two any two compulsory pollen tube move towards the synergy because by rupturing any one of synergy only pollen tube can enter into the embryo sac here what is the main role of filiform apparatus here you can see above the synergy you can see some kind of uh, fibrous thickenings which are called filiform apparatus here, these filiform apparatus can produce one kind of chemicals. So, by the activity of the chemicals, what happens? The pollen tube compulsory move towards the synergy. So, that movement is guided by the filiform apparatus. So, finally, by rupturing any one of synergy, the pollen tube enter into the embryo sac. Then, the tip of the pollen tube burst and the two male gametes which are present inside the pollen tube liberated into the embryo sac. So, out of two, one male gamete moves towards the female gamete gamete egg cell and another male gamete moves towards the central cell. This is the total one. You can call it as central cell. Inside the central cell, two polar nuclei are present. These are two polar nuclei. So, one male gamete moves towards the female gamete and another male gamete moves towards the central cell. This male gamete, you can say it as first male gamete and this one, you can say it as second male gamete. Then what happens? Generally, first male gamete, this is first male gamete, fuses with the egg cell and forms zygote. Then, in the zygote, due to repeated divisions, zygote developed into embryo. So, this is called fertilization or syngamy. And the second male gamete, this is second male gamete. So, it moves towards the central cell and fuses with that and uh, form primary endosperm nucleus. In short way, you can call it as PEN, pen, primary endosperm nucleus. And due to repeated divisions in pen, what happens? Primary endosperm nucleus developed into a endosperm. This is called as triple fusion. Why triple fusion? Because this is one male gamut. And in central cell, two nuclei, two polar nuclei are present. So, in this two are present. This is one. So, one plus two, three. That is why triple fusion. Fusion of three nuclei, you can call it as triple fusion. And here, one thing I have to say, male gamete, this is in haploid condition X or it can be represented as N also. X cell is also haploid, that is X. So, due to these two fusion, zygote formation takes place that is in diploid condition, that is 2X. And the embryo is also 2x due to repeated divisions and uh, any male gamete male or female gametes usually the gametes are haploid x in condition and the central cell in this two nuclei are present this is x this is x that is why this is you can say it as 2x that is diploid and the primary endosperm nucleus here 2x and x so 3x that is called triploid condition so due to repeated division endosperm form
formation takes place that is also in triploid condition 3x. What is haploid? What is diploid? What is triploid? I think uh, I have to explain this. While explaining haploid, diploid and triploid condition, first uh, I want to tell you about the human being. Then only you can understand perfectly. Human being, that means we are all human beings. Human being is in diploid condition, that means 2x. Actually in our body, some crores of cells are present, number of cells are present. So this is one single cell. In the middle of the cell, nucleus is present. Inside the nucleus, chromosomes are present. In each cell, chromosome number is 46. 46 is diploid, that is 2x, divided into 2, 23 plus 23. This is haploid, this is haploid. Actually, what is haploid means, here 23 chromosomes usually come from mother and these 23 chromosomes come from father. That is why we have 46 chromosomes in each cell. That is why this is haploid 1x, this is haploid 1x and this is diploid 2x. Gender-wise, human beings are male and female. In sexual reproduction, males usually produce male gametes and females usually produce female gametes. In what way the diploid converted into haploid? Because male gamete, haploid, female gamete is also haploid. Why 2x number of chromosomes reduced to x number of chromosomes? So here, one kind of division takes place that is meiosis, reduction division. Reduction division means chromosome and number reduced to half. So 2x reduced to half. Then what happens in sexual reproduction? Male gametes and female gametes which are in haploid condition undergo fertilization. After fertilization, zygote formation takes place. So x and x again 2x. So diploid zygote formation takes place. In zygote due to repeated divisions, zygote developed into embryo and the embryo finally developed into a small baby that is infant baby. So embryo also 2x and the infant baby is also 2x. Again human being is 2x. Here human being is diploid. Here also the baby is also diploid. Without meiosis, what happens? Here meiosis doesn't occur. Then what happens? The male gamete also 2x, female gamete also 2x. 2x, 2x in fertilization 4x. The chromosomal number here 46 to 46 then 92 chromosomes come in the infant. That baby is not look like a human being. If the chromosomal number increased or decreased even one number also some drastic changes you can see. So that is the importance of meiosis that is haploid and diploid. I hope you understand somewhat about the haploid and diploid. Now come to the angiospermic flowering plants. Now when you come to the angiospermic flowering plant you can take any flowering plant root, stem, leaf, flowers. All these parts in each and every cell the chromosomal number is 2x that is diploid. So here this is male sex organ. This is female sex organ. The male sex organ usually the anther produce pollen grains. Here the male gametes are present in the pollen grains only. So these pollen grains formed after meiosis and when we come to the female sex organ. Here female sex organ is this is inside the ovule the embryo sac is present. This embryo sac is also developed by meiosis. That means in male gamete is x in condition due to meiosis and in the embryo sac each this is female gamete and uh, here the two polar nuclei this is also x this is also x haploid haploid. If here one egg cell means female gamete is also x. So x plus x in zygote 2x formation diploid condition takes place in the embryo also 2x. And in central cell due to presence of two polar nuclei this is we can say it as diploid 2x then x plus 2x then in primary endosperm nucleus diploid condition endosperm is also in triploid condition. So usually haploid diploid triploid on this topic you will get uh, some questions in the competitive exams and then what happens after fertilization. So in the embryo sac the synergids or synergids only useful for the entry of the pollen tube. So after completing that process synergids degenerate the antipodals which are present towards the chalaza these also degenerate and only this female gamete after fertilization developed into embryo. So here embryo formation takes this part embryo formation takes place and here this region endosperm formation takes place. So this is endosperm. So finally the embryo sac is filled with only two parts that is embryo and this is endosperm. So after that what happens as embryo is growing endosperm degenerate because endosperm only supply food materials nutrients to the developing embryo. So in this way finally inside the embryo sac embryo becomes
become large endosperm somewhat reduced and sometimes some portion is remain and uh, this ovule after fertilization developed into seed means this ovary part developed into fruit so finally the sepals petals and stamens this region style and stigma wither away in this way our answer explanation is completed if you like this video please share and subscribe to my channel thank you